She was always very angry, um, saying, you know, uh, F you, F you, because with dementia, you know, that's what happens. Sometimes they get very angry. But um, unfortunately, mom had fell over the dog and hit her head really bad in the front. She had like a concussion. Because it was hard at first. I mean, I was losing my hair. I was stressed out. Um, I was very angry all the time. So mom never got sick. And we would get sick, fever, cold, coughing, sinuses. And I was like, wow, like, mom never gets sick. Don't be so hard on yourself when you get a little impatient with your loved one who is sick or you get a little angry. It's okay, it's natural. Just keep on, you know, um, apologizing. Don't, don't let the guilt eat you up. Uh, so first of all, Sarah, it's nice um, of you to agree to answer a couple of our questions for all our patients to be, to get to know us better. Right. Uh, so would you please tell us where you come from and what brought you to Swiss Medical Hospital? Um, well, we're from Hawaii and uh, when mom got diagnosed and they said that it was terminal and she'd only live for five years, <clears throat> I didn't give up. I said, there's hope. So I did research on stem cells and unfortunately because of the regulations in the United States, we couldn't get any help there. So then I found Swiss Medica, and I did research on other places, and, um, but for some reason I wanted to come here because I knew that you guys were like one of the first or something, yeah. So would you please mention the official diagnosis of your mom? Uh, frontolopio dementia. So um, have you considered any other clinics so or it was just us? Uh, um, were you in touch with any other representatives? Yes, I talked to some places in India, but now because of the government and the regulations over there, they can no longer do it over there. And um, we went to Mexico with uh, Placid Way, and there was really good results. But um, unfortunately, mom had fell over the dog and hit her head really bad in the front. She had like a concussion. So then, um, uh, we, you know, we decided to come here. Originally, Swiss Medica was my first choice, but uh, because Mexico was a little bit closer, we went to go try that. So I knew after the stem cell treatment in Mexico, after the results that I saw, like, okay, this is real. Let's go to Swiss Medica because over there, they didn't give the whole treatment like they do over here. Um, they told us it would be a three-day treatment, but we were only there for maybe an hour. They just injected her once. There was no physiology. There was no... Um, uh, what is that, the vitamin um, uh, infusions. infusions, and that's what I was looking forward to. So I was a little, you know, sad that it, they didn't have it over there, although there was still great results. But um, the treatment over here is way better than what we got over there. So are there any other differences um, apart from the um, medical treatment plan? Okay, how to say? Oh. Осим осим наполненост и третмент плана, дали има како fulfillment, yeah. Apart from the fulfillment of the treatment plan, are there any other differences in between their clinic and ours? Oh yes, um, over there, like I said, we were just there for an hour, and they just injected it into her vein on her hand. They didn't do it through the spinal cord, like what I was hoping for, because it's supposed to go directly to the brain through the spinal cord. That's the research that I did, so that's what I wanted. So they didn't do that. Um, they uh, they didn't have like I said the uh, the the, uh, nu the nutritional vitamins um, infusions the exosome infusions they all just did it one time only right here. So, so did they provide yeah. you with some accommodation? Uh, food, no, like no a, we had to transportation. Get, yeah, we had to get our own hotel. Uh, it was kind of um, a little stressful. Uh, we had to yeah, we had to provide everything for ourselves. Taxi. Yeah, everything. So over here, everything's provided. It's a lot easier. It's much more comfortable. Yeah. Um, tell us, please, from your point of view, uh, you're here for the second time and yes. you've been to the city. How do you find this place as a tourist? Oh, yeah, the people are wonderful. They're so family oriented. They're very friendly, uh, very loving. You know. People were like, what are you doing going all the way to Serbia, blah, 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 talking about the war and this and that. And it's dangerous. They're a poor country, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, you know, I feel in my heart like God wants me to go here. I feel safe. I have peace. I'm going. I'm going to go see for myself. And uh, same thing with Mexico. They're like, don't go. It's dangerous. The cartel, you know, you got to see for yourself. You can't listen to everything. You have to, you have to go see for yourself.
to be able to break the myths, yes, right? Yes, yeah. All right, let's talk a little bit yeah, about the treatment which, um, uh, ever since you found out that your mom had this diagnosis, mm -hmm. so what have you started to do? Uh, how you felt? What kind of treatments you started to looking for, for her apart from stem cells? Like, um, so there was uh, this thing called Recode with uh, Dr. Bredesen Recode. And uh, he talked about hitting all the parts of your body, you know, sleep, um, stress, nutrition, all that. So uh, my mom had high mercury toxins in her body. Um, so I took out, I went to a bio dentist and they had to use this vacuum to suck all the vapes out while they're taking out all her aldamine mercury from her mm -hmm. teeth. She had plenty. And my mother, she used to eat a lot of a lot of fish all the time, canned clams, you know, whatever, whatever. So that's where we think the high mercury came from. I took out her fake boobs because they were she got them like 20 something years ago and there was leakage going into her body. So we took out her breast implants and then I started her diet, everything clean, organic, you know, very um, particular about what she eats because of all the pesticides and chemicals and non-organic foods. And you know, we just tried to touch everything, sleep, stress, you know, so. And then the stem cells was what I later found out. Are there any medications she's um, on I right decided now? not to do any medications. I felt that they all would natural. do more harm than good. I wanted to do all natural. So have you noticed any changes? Yes, like, um, like so when I did the first stem cell treatment, not here, mom was able to feed herself again. And her hand used to be stuck like this and it immediately opened up and it was relaxed. Um, and there was life in her eyes. And so I was like, wow, this is amazing, you know? But then she fell and had the concussion and then she started to decline again. So then we, we came here and by the time we came here, mom, it was like, how do they say, a deer with headlights on, nobody home in the eyes? Yes, yes. That's, that's the first thing I noticed. Yes. This second time when yes. I saw her, she was looking at me. Yes. We had an interu interaction. Yes. Last time she was just, no, yeah. She, she, was, she was always very angry. Um, saying, you know, uh, F you, F you, because with dementia, you know, that's what happens. Sometimes they get very angry. So that stopped, and there was life in her eyes. She could follow you, you know, and so that was very good to see. That's what I noticed. Mm -hmm. But I, I thought, okay, maybe it was last time. I, I probably didn't notice, but now when you yes. um, said it out loud, yes. yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, uh, that's what I realized. Uh, remind us, please, when you were here last time? Uh, How many months? Have last left? year, September, the ending of September last year. Mm -hmm. Yes. So when you mm -hmm. came home, uh -huh. when, after how many weeks, months maybe, that you've noticed something has changed? Um, it, was a, it was right away, actually, uh, that we noticed that there was more life in her eyes. She was there again. Um, and... Uh, what else? It was in September. I can't really remember, but no more cursing. She wasn't. She was sleeping better, uh -huh. and then um, she had a problem. She was always constipated, and no matter what I did, uh, suppositories, you know, all the the stomach stuff to make her go to the bathroom, it would be like a week. It wouldn't help. Nothing would come out. But after we did the first stem cell treatment, she started to be regular again. I didn't have to give her any of those things, so that was wonderful. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. a part of that, like I, you know, uh, back in Hawaii, there's not much, uh, like here, the physiology, physiotherapy is really good. Unfortunately, in Hawaii, I don't know if it's the same with the whole United States, there's not much that the physical therapist can do because they're afraid of hurting her. So we, the family, have to take it upon ourselves to stretch her every day, hold her, help her to walk. I put her on the treadmill. I put my arms under her armpits, and I make her walk to get her heart pumping because I know that's very important with the stem cell treatment. You the environment is very important, yeah? Um, the support system is very important, and the faith is very important for the stem cells to continue to work well. She's got to be, you know, not stressed. She's got to be happy. And so, like, whoever is listening, um, don't give up if nobody out there can help you. And if people with dementia, if they're stuck, don't be afraid to have somebody help you stretch them every day. It's very important. Don't let them sit down all day, every hour. Let them stand up, you know, for 10 minutes every hour. Stretch them, move them. It really helps. Because there's, yeah, there's a patient in, that my friend works with, dementia people, and she's stuck like this. Mm -hmm. It's because at the no one takes nobody care. at the 
hospital will stretch them, nobody helps them. You have to stretch them. Apart from being her, uh, apart from being her personal physiotherapist, yeah. in which way uh, your life has changed ever since your mom was diagnosed uh, with dementia, and how does it make your life challenging <clears throat> and hers as well? Well, you go through phases. I guess you go through resentment. You go through um, guilt, you go through depression, you go through anger. Uh, it's just a cycle. And then you go through acceptance, and it's either you're going to give up or you're going to keep on fighting. And because of my faith in God, I, I kept on fighting. And, you know, I was provided through my higher power just these wonderful people in my life that would help me with all these things that I needed so I wasn't so stressed out. You know, it's just, it's just amazing. Um, if you're a spiritual person, he'll provide, you know, people in your life to help you. Because it was hard at first. I mean, I was losing my hair. I was stressed out. Um, I was very angry all the time. Yeah, you know, but, you know, things change, seasons change, and you just keep on fighting and you don't give up. Don't give up. Uh, Sada, can you describe what was your hardest moment uh, before the stem cell treatment in taking care of your mom? Um, I guess hardest moments, uh, of course, watching her decline, watching her is very emotionally straining. Um, and I guess when you go to so many doctors and they tell you there's no hope, I'm sorry. That, of course, that's hard, right? Mm -hmm. But I, I refuse to accept that. This treatment plan, mm -hmm. it is different, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. In mm -hmm. which way is it different from the previous one? Uh, well, <clears throat> so every day they take her to physiotherapy. Um, they have, you know, they have equipment here, technology here that you don't see in the United States. Even in Mexico, the other clinic I went to, I didn't see any of this. You know, I, it's very impressive. Um, and, you know, the, the food that they feed you, it's not salty, you know, lots of vegetables, lots of fruits. Um, the staff's very helpful, anything that you need. If you need somebody to help you in the room with your loved one, they'll send somebody to help you. The last time I was here, they sent wonderful ladies to help me, you know, shower my mom, help my mom go to the bathroom. Um, yes, everything that you need is just provided here. No, I mean mm -hmm. that I think this time she had neuronal stem cells as well. Oh, I mean, yeah, that's what treatment. I wanted. Yeah, this treatment. <laughs> it has got a different yes. fulfillment than the previous one. Yeah, because so we had to take the stem cells from her bone marrow and harvest it into neuro cells um, that would go directly to her brain versus the other stem cells and went to other areas in her body that we noticed, right? Um, so uh, now this one that went directly to her brain, mm -hmm. um, we noticed right away that I asked my mom, I said, Mommy, and she, she responded, she said, mm. and I was like, oh my God. And then the big, big thing that I've noticed, my mother, I've been taking care of her with this for almost four and a half, five years now, I think. She never got sick once. Um, because if I understand correctly, frontolobial dementia, the immune system keeps on attacking the brain or something like that. And it's like your brain's kind of on fire and, and you know, um, so mom never got sick. And we would get sick, fever, cold, coughing, sinuses. And I was like, wow, like, mom never gets sick. And, you know, um, I knew that it was because of her diagnosis. And so my friend, who also works with dementia people in the hospital, she said the same thing. All her dementia pati patients, they never get sick. No cold, no cough, no fever. Maybe urinary tract infection, but that's about it. So we got a cold coming here. Um, my friends were sick before we came here, maybe on the plane, but we all got sick. Mom got sick. She was coughing, sinuses, and I was like, oh my God, my mom is sick. I know you're not supposed to be happy if she's sick, but I'm like, oh my God, her, her immune system is working. She, it's reacting, it's fighting off a virus, and she's having symptoms. That's a great sign because she's never gotten sick. So now I know that whatever's going on in her immune system is probably stopped in her brain, and it's working, function, functioning, functioning correctly now because she's, you know, she's coughing and she's like, mm, mm, mm. And that's an amazing thing to see, because that's normal. <laughs> so what are your expectations for the future? What kind of results you're hoping now to see after this treatment? 
I'm expecting for her brain to regenerate over time and um, you know we're just going to continue to be her own physical therapist at home, make her walk, stretch her, try our best to do speech therapy with her, like let her look at her mouth while we're talking and because that's what I'll do, like mom say um, I love you and she'll be like I love you and um, so when after this second treatment here she's starting to respond more and, and say a little bit of words again. So, so there's communication. Like, yes, uh, and she's making more noise. Now, like, mm, 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 mm. like she completely stopped doing that. Were you happy to hear? Of them? course, yeah. yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, who I'm, else? Who yeah. else lives lives with you at uh, at your house over there um, to help you out? Because it's yes. it, it obviously difficult. To yes, I have a lot of um, aunties mm -hmm. that help. Uh, it's, there's a lot of women in the house. I have. Um, I have like three different aunties that mm -hmm. help. I have one that has a room in our house and my auntie's son does night duty. And I'm so grateful because I only have to pay him 450 bucks a week to do five nights night duty. You can't find that. But I feel like God sent him to me because of my faith. So yeah, I have a lot of help, a lot of help. My neighbor helps me stretch my mom every day. It's really good. And she's surrounded with her grandchildren, which is very mm -hmm. important. I make my children sit on her lap and hug her because the touching is very important for healing. Yeah. Um, you have been through a lot. You are an experienced one. Yes. I mean, what kind of advice you can give to those who, who are just in the stage of not acceptance? The, yeah. What is the first stage you notice? Uh, to? Resentment. Resentment. Or guilt. What yes. kind of a gu advice can you give to them? Um, don't be to cheer them up a little bit. Yeah. Don't be so hard on yourself when you get a little impatient with your loved one who is sick or you get a little angry. It's okay. It's natural. Just keep on, you know, um, apologizing. Don't, don't let the guilt eat you up, you know, um, just keep on asking for forgiveness and loving and learning because it's, it's, it's a cycle. You're going to go through these seasons of changes and it's perfectly normal and it's okay and it gets better. Just don't give up. you, you got to have faith and, you know, your higher power will provide. So and, would you recommend them to come and visit us in Belgrade, Serbia? Oh, yes, of course. Yes. And don't listen to people that will say like, oh, okay, if these stem cells work, then how come, you know, there's so much people still sick and dying and da 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 it's because it, it's the way you think. You, you can't be negative. You have to be positive. You have to. Don't listen to the negative things or you're just going to see the negative. You're going to see the negative and then that's when things aren't going to change. You have to stay positive. Even when you only see the negative, it's okay. Like just keep on continuing until the time comes. You know, where things will change for the better. That's what I've noticed and that's what I keep on seeing. So that's why I keep on going.